Episode 33, John Bonet Case. Who served that girl pineapple? I truly didn't respect the pineapple. Did you respect the pineapple? Because if you think about it, whoever served John Bonet that pineapple is likely the person who killed her or is responsible for her death. What's sweet about this mystery is everybody will probably have an open mind as to who served John Bonet the pineapple. Number one, an intruder. Two, Burke Ramsey. Three, John Ramsey. Or four, Patsy Ramsey. Well, I can see clearly, I don't know about you, but which one sticks out the most likely. An intruder would have scared John Bonet senseless. She would have screamed. So it was definitely not an intruder. Burke Ramsey. This is who I think got out the bowl of pineapple. Because Burke's fingerprints are on the glass. Because that's a serving spoon, not a regular spoon. So I think Burke got out the pineapple and John Bonet came down and ate some of it. John Ramsey. He doesn't seem like a kind of pineapple kind of dad. I don't see him getting up John Bonet and let's have some fun and have some pineapple late at night when I need to be up early in the morning to pilot a plane to Charlevoix. So it's pretty unlikely that John Ramsey got out the bowl of pineapple. That leaves one person left, Patsy Ramsey. Does she seem like the mom, the kind of mom, excuse me, that would get out a bowl of pineapple with cream and serve it to her daughter, John Bonet? Was it possible that John Bonet wet the bed, went upstairs and told her mom, and she also said that she was hungry and her mom got out some pineapple and had her eat it while she went and cleaned up. And then what we know is the pineapple was still left out. So does Patsy seem like the person that would just leave the bowl of pineapple out all night? So what we know is something happened. John Bonet ate a little bit of the pineapple and there was some kind of confrontation or accident that took place. What if John Ramsey came downstairs and said, what the hell's going on? We gotta be up in the morning. I gotta fly the plane tomorrow. And then a fight broke out between Patsy and John. And Patsy swung a flashlight but hit John Bonet instead of John. In whatever manner John Bonet had her skull fractured, does it make sense that Patsy and John might not have wanted to call emergency services? At first, they probably spent a good long time tending to her, trying to revive her. While she stayed unconscious, they did not know what to do. They could not call 911 for help because they were in a fight and it was their fault John Bonet was knocked out and unconscious. It's most likely that an hour or an hour and a half went by before they finally decided to stage her death. And so them both working together had a lot of advantages. With them both working together, they could do a very good job writing the ransom note. They could do a very good job on covering up the crime. And they might have some difference of opinion on certain things. And those might be the things that we look at where we're confused about because they weren't in sync on doing those things. John Ramsey probably took her down to the basement and strangled her 
and staged the crime scene. And then Patsy and John worked on the ransom note. And they probably decided to make it look like something to do with John's business. So that's where they got the small foreign faction, the $118,000, and that it was a ransom attempt. Patsy most likely got the white blanket, went downstairs, wrapped up John Bonet, and moved her into the wine cellar. She probably also put the duct tape on her mouth. John and Patsy probably decided about what time they should call 911 and what Patsy should say when she called. And they might have even rehearsed it a little bit so she didn't give them any information. That might be why she does that what on that one part of the call because she wasn't expecting that and she had to give an answer. They probably decided that they should call their friends after 911 because when the police got there, they'd soon discover John Bonet's body and they wanted their friends to be there when that happened. That's why she probably called them immediately and screamed and hollered for them to come over. The evidence linking Patsy to the crime is number one, the fibers on the duct tape. Two, the ransom note in her writing. Three, John Bonet being wrapped in the white blanket. The most compelling physical evidence was four fibers found on the duct tape that match Patsy Ramsey's clothing. Then there's the phony three-page note. We know Patsy wrote many letters and notes. She indented many of her letters just like the ransom note, even including not skipping a line between the two paragraphs, just the indentation. And she used explanation marks all the time. And John Bonet wrapped lovingly in her white blanket this is done often by parents who kill their children. Well, this sure makes it look like Patsy's guilty. And it ends this episode. So I'll see you on the next one.